back at the lecture. If the heart is the desire, then the point of the heart that awakens is the sensation of the Creator. And at that time, a person, through this point, begins to want something that's beyond the desire. Such people, there aren't many in the world, but well, those who awaken, uh, and they grow and they grow. Those people want to realize that point, but at the end of the day, everyone, in the end, all humanity, the billions of people, will have to come to the evolution of that point, and they'll have to reach the same level as the Creator Himself. And then Rob mentioned a topic that we now know is a touchy one. Because the Creator, because He is good, well, He created the creature with the sole intention of bringing it to the good. He must be a kind of a dumb creator. Because all we got here is a lot of real problems. In our desire to be like the Creator, we start killing each other. In our desire to be like the Creator, we create Hitler. It all comes from love and desire. There's no evil there. There's no Hitler wasn't evil. He just loved his own God and his own desire. And, you know, and, you know, kill these other people because they're not worthy, right? So, this is, what kind of God is this? Well, this must be a dumb God. No, it's a stupid God. Rob approached the board again and continued to explain. Our common soul is called Adam. It's that kli, that vessel that the Creator had created with our will to receive. And it's filled with the upper lights. Now within this body called Adam, there are all the parts connected like in one body harmoniously. Now this soul is broken. It falls into a degree which is called below the barrier. And at the barrier, the spiritual sensation ends. Here below the barrier, there are those the same parts, but feeling that they're disconnected from each other. Now, why the fall and the uh, ascent back up? So that here we'll find how much we hate each other. That's the breaking. Everyone's ego, egoism. Because of that, we'll understand why we need to willingly rise up back to unification. There were moments when we thought we'd have to pack up and leave we had the sense of a total lack of communication. This is a glance back at one of our meetings. You seem to be presenting the Kabbalah as the truth and it read like dogma. Be open, be open, be open to the fact that there are other powerful models. People come to me from every generation. They are so different. No one is limited. Anyone can begin to study and see how it works within them. That's not what we're saying. No. You're, you're, missing the point. you're missing the point. In physics, we had Newtonian mechanics. It was wonderful. It explained everything. Everybody believed it was right. And then came quantum physics. Now, people don't accept new things when they come in. The first thing we have is, hit it out, we don't want it. We don't want it. It's not, it's wrong. I have developed a model which I find is very useful in explaining. I know I have not proven it. I know it is not the truth. It is a work in progress. It's a theory in progress. And it will take a long, long time to, to prove. Because they attain reality from below upward. How do you even know that? You make a statement like that. He has arrogance. Still, despite it all, the scientists stayed on. They listen. They took notes. As scientists, they know that ultimately this is the only way to discover the truth. Once more at the lecture. Love, will, light, wisdom flows through love to the world, and that benefits the creator. I'm afraid to tell you it is not so. Because in order for us 
to be a hose for the light, we have to have the same properties as the light because it's all it all connects through a process of equivalence of form. Now, if you can take your desire to, first of all, discern what exactly it is, it's not some intentions or properties, it's a desire, you can begin to relate to the pleasure that comes to you, as it says here, by even 1%. If you begin to do that, you'll feel the Creator. Thus, lecture followed lecture. We've captured 10 hours of lectures on video. Videos of Rob explaining all of the wisdom of Kabbalah. We saw the city only through the car window on our way back and forth from the hotel. They tell us it's beautiful. Let's return to the lecture. We have letters say like Aleph, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and then Aleph again, etc. There are no words there. There are dots there, and we might have 20 such letters, or 6 such letters, or 3 or 4. All in all, they give us, how should I put it, a formula in which we have to do things inside with our desire. And that's how one is taught how we should perform actions of receiving in order to give to the Creator. Now that's what we call God. It's an unchanging law operating on every item in creation. Let's say that's creation. So that's the creature. And that law operates on the creature in order to bring it to equivalence of form with the Creator. So that they equalize. So that the creature and Creator will merge together to the point of no difference. So what's so special? It could do it in the beginning. The thing is though, that the creature has to develop within itself a desire to be like the Creator. Now there is a sensation that every word is being heard, but how hard it was to get there. We recall. I do not cut into any spiritual order that says, I know the truth. Nobody knows what God does this. You don't know. And I don't care how much learning you got, you can't claim such a thing as this. It's so hubris, it's so, it's so egoic. To me, it's the height of egoism. But he teaches as if this is the only way. And it can't be the only way. You rejected by it. My, my saying, I know what God, God talks to me. I said, you said, you know, because he talks to you. I said, why do you know? He said, I won't get into it personally. But you, uh, the, the feeling was, you know, and I don't know. Yeah, because you're a Kabbalist, you know, but I, because I'm not a Kabbalist, I don't know. But you don't know what an experience is like. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what hung out with. <laughs> or what experience I There's nothing you can do about it. You don't know what I've seen. In our world, there is nothing that doesn't come down from the world at Silu, the forces, the substance, actions, time, space, motion, everything possible. What is here in this world is called a branch, which is an offshoot of what exists in the upper world. So how do I tell someone something about the upper world? I take the names from this world of people, things, places, society. I refer to what happens here in the world of Siluts. But I take the names from here and there. If one knows only about this world, then the, the story takes place in this world, and then he imagines the Creator as a big person. But one who understands that it talks about something beyond this world, seeks where it is up there. In Kabbalah, you never know when that moment will come, when all the pieces fall together. A major inversion takes place, and it all begins to make sense. back at the lecture. But still, how do I receive pleasure and constantly enjoy? Endlessly. So there has to be someone out there that I enjoy because he enjoys. It's as if the pleasure goes through me to him. So then I, I'm not put out because my pleasure is always here like a mother who enjoys 
with her babe 